from the University of Arizona Comedy Club. And as Gina said, I'm going to be talking about the overview and the goals of, of the club in general. So, uh, and the club started in the in 1980s, um, but by the early 2000s, it was dying out. And by 2000, in, in 2007, it was revived by me and several of, uh, several of my friends. And uh, it was revived for a simple purpose, basically to have a, a common a group of friends that have similar interests. And just have, basically hang out with these people and know someone who has the same interests as you. And it was very, very simple and, and yeah. So the club has expanded a lot since then. It started with basically five members uh, and two officers, and it's currently growing every year. Since then, we have 30 active members which, with about seven officers, so it's, it's grown a lot. But and our current goal is very simple. It's basically to inspire and assist anybody um, who's interested in astronomy and science in general. So we're not limited to only uh, astronomy discussions or astronomy majors. We're open to all majors and um, discussions about science in general. So some of our, the scope of the club now, we've grown a lot since the early days of just basically uh, having someone with a similar interest as you. But that's still a main, major part of the club, uh, but we've grown a lot since then. So the main, some of the main things that we're, we're focused on is we actually do research projects. Um, we have one research project that's completely ran by undergrads, um, based on exoplanets. We also have another one that's ran by graduate students um, that use Kepler data to study stars. We also have another one that's run by a professor um, that also studies uh, radio astronomy and molecular clouds through that. So we also are very much into public outreach, like star parties and our website and stuff like that, and you'll hear more about that later. Um, we also do a lot of professional development, such as coming to AAS meetings and um, helping with CVs and stuff like that. We also have presentations at our club meetings, so it's just you know students that you're presenting to and you can get used to presenting in public. Um, and we also do a lot of networking, such as AAS, and just the, the club itself is basically a networking group. You get to meet people who are going to you potentially be working for with the working with the rest of your life and stuff like that. So it's really good. And a lot of peer mentoring goes on. It's kind of um, how the club works and by default, and it just kind of is natural for everyone in the club. It's like so the older members want to help the younger members, and um, it's re it's a really good system that we have worked out. And we have a lot of competing support. As Gina mentioned, um, University of Arizona uh, Astronomy Department is really, really supports us. We have uh, J Dr. John Began is our one of our mentor. He helps us a lot whenever we need help. Um, also, the Planetary Science Department helps us a lot, and also our local uh, planetarium too. So we have a lot of support. And all of these topics that I went over very briefly is, is going to be discussed in the following talks. So stay tuned for those. It's going to be really awesome. Uh, thank you. Yeah, any questions? Sweet. Good time. <laughs> questions? Yes. Jake, what are some of the other uh, disciplines, other subject areas that are a part of the club that are at U of A? Yes, we have, we have an English major, we have psychology, we have biology, microbiology, um, we have math, computer science, so we're open to anybody. We've actually had, like, the, the paper that we published, we actually had other majors besides astronomy on it. Financial question: Who supports your travel, all of you, to meetings like this? That's a very good question. So uh, our student government actually supports us a lot. Uh, ASUA is with. Oh, there's a student. We're just going to switch slides. Uh, you keep talking. Uh, helps helps a lot. So it's um, that's really the major the major way we are able to get to these meetings. So you can move it. Any other questions? Well, yeah. I don't want to take a question away if it's actually the next section. It's okay. No, there's time. Is the next section about the research results? Yes, yes. actually. Okay, I'll wait. <laughs> okay. Great. Thank you. Oh, there's, there's a couple of questions. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Any others? I have a few. Okay. <laughs> How do you go about recruiting members? Uh, so we recruit members mainly through um, a lot of different aspects. Our website is a very big one. Word of mouth is very big. We also have um, a, a, a club fair that's put on by the university every year, and we got a lot of members that way. Um, also, people talk about us at orientation and stuff like that. We actually got to a few orientations to meet freshmen. Um, so there's a lot of different ways people get to know about our club. So. 
Is there any, I mean, maybe they'll come more from this meeting than anything, but has there been any interest from outside of the U of A club attendees or wanting to be a part of the club? Can you repeat the question? Yeah, have you had anybody from outside of the U of A want to become part of the club? Students that maybe um, meet in meetings or anything like that? Yeah, we have a few grad students that are at different universities that are we're collaborating with, and some of the research projects, we had people across the, the ocean, Atlantic Ocean, that were helping us doing the research. Okay. Um, so we're, we're open to anybody that wants to join us and okay. work with them. Do you accept? Yeah. yeah. Do you accept uh, your public outreach component? Do you, um, tell me more about that. Well, there's going to be a whole talk about that, so. Okay. <laughs> like he's, he's the teaser. He's yeah. the trailer for all the I'm other the talks. Yeah. <laughs> I have one more question okay. for you. Do you have an advisor who is a faculty member? And if so, how involved is he or she? Yeah, so uh, Dr. John Deegan is our advisor. And um, he's, he's involved as much as we want him to be involved. Um, so we try to do everything on our own, but if we get stuck somewhere, um, such as when we were publishing a, a professional paper, we didn't have the money to do that, so we asked him and he helped us with it. And so he helps us with anything we need help with. But we try to be as independent as possible until we can't be. <laughs> so, right. He's really good that way. We have time for one more question. Yep. Yeah. Do your um, subject areas covered in the group meetings and all your projects? Do they, are they astronomical research projects only, or do they include the type of work that's going on at the Stewart Observatory Mirror Lab, for example? So we, and, and try, to, we, we try to do, um, have faculty members sometimes present our, at our meetings. That's, someone's going to talk about that a little bit later. Uh, but we actually, the students themselves can present on any research they've done. We had a psychology major, or psychology experiment presented. We had slugs, biology, basically, presented. And so this, you can present really anything there, just science in general. We want more information about science. Great, thank, thank you, you so much.